Hello and welcome to another 4th Dimension Studios video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make an atomic bomb a bit like this one. Now it was originally done by Fabian Weeble at fweeble.com but it's very complicated and hard to understand for beginners so I thought since I struggled with that tutorial myself I thought I would help some other beginner who wanted to do that tutorial, that tutorial but couldn't because it was so complicated and advanced. So this is the website it's from, fweeble.com. I've got the permission from the site owner and he does makes little projects and amazing little videos that you can see here. Here are some of the ones that he's made. It's atomic bomb not sure what that is. He's made a little animation called Freddy's World. But um, make sure you check out the site because it's really good for not only tutorials but inspiring clips. So yeah, open up Blender and delete the default cube. Now the first thing we need to do is go into the shadings tab and add new texture but you'll see that you can't add new texture for some reason but that is because it's for the particular object that you've selected which obviously we haven't selected an object so click on the world tab and it'll apply a texture for every texture uh, every object that you have so that you can use them in different objects without without having the same material so if you create a new texture and call this one clouds we can then set the noise size to 1.814 and then the brightness under colors to 1.379 and the contrast to 3.28 now these textures are going to be the displacement of the clouds and the the gas the gas that you'll see. So we need to make the we're not going to actually model out the individual lines inside the clouds as that would take. It wouldn't actually take that long, but having to do it for every keyframe that will take some time. So if you go into the texture and call this this plus one so obviously this is the displacement number one then click on this little tab here and click add new and call this one display two now this one is a Veroni or however you pronounce that I should really look it up shouldn't I did I say that before in another tutorial oh well I haven't looked it up so I'm just gonna go with Veroni just don't think it's probably French or something Anyway, it's uh, the size is 0.462 and the brightness is 1.32 and the contrast is 1.8. Now we need to create another texture. This is going to be called Displa 3. Now this is another Veroni, but it's completely different. So we need to change all we need to do on this one is change the brightness to 0.744 and the contrast to 1.993. So um once we've done that we can actually make the shockwave and the plane that the shockwave is going to be on, which is like the ground. So click spacebar, add mesh plane and click S to scale it up to about that size it can, it's going to be quite big to get the perspective alright it's got to be quite large so then we're going to make a, a add an object called a torus so I think you need Python for this which you should already have but if you don't think you already have it Google Python and you need to download that and install it so add a mesh and call this a torus 
we can actually keep these all the default all these defaults the same as the modifiers are gonna or the displacement modifiers are gonna change all this for us. So the major radius is one, the minor radi radius is a quarter, the major segments is 48 and the minor segments is 16. We click OK. And again we need to scale this up. So you can see it's kind of like a ring or a donut shape. Now we need to create um, the animation from frame 100 to frame 400 so it gets bigger. So we can do this by going to frame 400 and click I scale and then go to frame 100 and click S 0 enter I scale. So the I, the pressing I scale actually creates a keyframe so that when you go forward in time you can see that the torus gets bigger. So if you right click in between these two windows here and click split area and bring the cursor to about here. It will create two windows here so you could if you wanted to have a view here and have a view here but for now we're actually going to change it from a 3D view to an IPO curve editor. So we can see how the curve actually grows. So you'll see it starts off going slowly and then gets bigger and then slows down as it gets even bigger, if you know what I mean. So it's quite good and handy for editing the speed because obviously we don't want a nice easy atomic bomb. So we want it to come in quite quickly and then slowly fade out. So if we select the X and Y axis and click by pressing the X axis and then shift right click no, shift left click on the Y axis and then you'll see that these buttons are pressed in. You actually have to press them twice, sorry I didn't realize that. So you click on the Y axis and then you shift left click on the X axis one here. No, you don't have to press them twice. Just press them as many times until they get actually pushed in because these are little, little buttons. So click tab a border select with B this little handle here so there's two handles here so you can't just right click otherwise you'll see two more lines than you want so if you click G and you can bring it up like that we actually want it to go about there so you can see how it goes upwards really quickly and then slowly fades out again and you'll see that we have another line here. Now this is the z-axis, so if you click on the scale of the z-axis and then click tab, this time you don't have to border select them as it's just this, the, just the z-axis. So if you click on this whole um, vertex, I don't know, it's the point. So click G and grab it, because we don't want this to go as tall as it is wide so you can see it's kind of flatter. Now click on this handle and bring it up so that it actually kind of overlaps here so it grows even faster than the y and x axis and then slows down again. So if we play this through just by dragging our cursor across this area here you can see how it goes, goes really quickly and then it slowly fades out uh, to a stop. You can also press Alt A to see what the animation looks like. Obviously without all the displacement mod modifiers, so click Escape to cancel that or click, right click on it. Now we need to add these empties. So if your cursor, if your 3D cursor, which is this thing here, isn't right in the center, click Shift C and then C again. Now add an empty, add empty, and we can scale this up a little bit. It doesn't really matter because we are going to scale them up and down later. But just so you can see it a bit clearly, press S to scale it up and down. Now rename this empty to 1 by clicking on the object tab or F7 
and click one here. Now we need to assign it to the same IPO curve as the torus. So to do that, just click on this. If we drag this, we can drag these this window across. But to do that, we need to click on this little, these two little arrows here, and click Oblipo. I'm not actually sure what Oblipo stands for. It's probably Object. Oh no, sorry. Ob. It. It. I think it's Object Interpolation or something. I'm not really sure, but oh no, Object IPO Curve. But I, yeah. I'm not sure what IPO, IPO stands for. Anyway, to we also need to edit this a little bit so to make the vertices so, so that the empty grows a little bit slower towards the end. So to do that, click on the x-axis, um, Shift left click Y, Shift left click Z. So now we've got all of them selected. Click Tab A B, select this uh, all these handles and points here and click G just bring it down a little bit now you might want to edit this as what well, these handles here as well so border select these with B then click G and kind of bring these down a little bit like that Then click tab to go back into the normal mode so you see that goes a li grows a little bit slower than the torus. Now we need to add another empty and call this two and then add another one and call this one three. Now we need to add the modifiers to the torus. So right click on the torus and then go into the editing tab and click add modifier displace. Now this one is going to have a mid level of zero and the uh, and the strength of 0.4. Change the local to object and change it to one. The texture is displa one, or the same texture as you named it before. Now if we click on number one or the um, empty number one, we can actually scale it up and down to change how much it is affected. So we don't want it that much, otherwise it's going to be a bit confusing. So maybe um, about there. It's completely up to you. And then we also need to add a subsurf modifier. We should really have done this before, but click add modifier, subsurf and click this little arrow here to bring it up to the top so it's actually higher than so the subsurf is actually done before the displacement add two levels of subsurf and click apply we can also make this smooth as well so you can um, have a look what it is like when it's nice and smooth but for now we're just going to keep it as set solid now, once we've added our displacement modifier, we need to add another displacement modifier. This one is going to be Displa2. And the mid level is going to be 0. And the strength is going to be 0.1. We also need to make this uh, the select number 2 and make it a little bit bigger or smaller depending on how you like it. So. If you keep right clicking in the center until number two comes up here or here. So click S and bring it up and down uh, and choose the number one and bring it up and down because now you can see what a little bit better what it will actually look like. So you might even want it to be really rough but if we do that you can actually see how the vertices are intersecting each other. So we probably want it about there, but we can always come back to it again in a minute. So right click on the torus again. We need to add another subsurf modifier. This time it's just going to stay there. We don't need to move it up. But we do need to turn optimal drawer on. And it will skip the rendering of the 
inside subdivided edges. We also need to put the render levels down to 1. So click Add Modifier, Displace. And to move up and down here, because you can actually see how the it's missed off the screen here, you can click Alt and left click to move up and down. So this final text, the final displacement is going to be Displa 3. Um, mid-level 0 and the strength of 0 0.05 change the object to 3 and I've just realized that we need to change the object here to 3 as well no, object here to 2 on display 2 now when we select the different um, empties you that when you scale them up and down it will make a difference. So you can see it makes a big difference there. And so if you select number two by just right clicking in the middle there, scale up two with S, you can see how it makes a difference there. Now you might want to right click on the torus again and set this smooth just to see what it looks like. And you can either render it with smooth on or smooth off. It's completely up to you. I normally render with smooth on, but it completely depends on what the subject is. I think last time I made this, I did put the smooth on, so I'm just going to leave it on now. But change, I would change size of one, I think, to about there, and in my opinion, that looks fine. Can render that. It would take a lot longer to render this. Well, not render it, but to draw it out as it's quite a lot bigger. So you can see it's not just the same thing. It does actually change as it gets bigger. And it looks quite good. Now the next thing we need to do is the column. So if you click View Front and go back to Frame 1 with this thing here, Okay, now add a cylinder, click spacebar, add mesh cylinder, change the vertices to 8 and make sure cap ends is off, radius to 1, depth to 2, click OK, tab, A, control R and use the scroll wheel until there's 8 pink lines, so that's 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is where the where Blender will make cuts into the cylinder. So if you click the left mouse button, you can see all the clicks that it's made. So click A twice until all the vertices are selected and click S Z until you get so it's about that size. Now add another modifier, we call this one Subsurf, and change it to level 2, and click Apply. I'll, you have to click Tab to get out of Edit Mode first, and then click Apply. Now we need to move it up a bit, to about there. Now move forward to about frame 400. and then view front and scale it up to about the size that you want it. Now, as you can see it's actually scaling from the center of the object which we don't actually want, we want it to scale from the bottom. So if you move it to about there and click shift C to center the cursor and then move around with alt, well you should really know that if you've been doing this tutorial but uh, if you don't I'm sorry I didn't explain that earlier. Then click center cursor here and it'll actually move the this 3D cursor, no this um, object cursor into the center of the 3D cursor. So now when you scale it, it'll actually scale from the point of the 3D cursor. So you scale it to about there, I think that's about right. And then click tab, 
A to make sure all the vertices are deselected and then right click on the top of the um, column and then click Alt, right click and if it goes down click again and if it goes in the wrong place move your cursor and Alt, right click on the top until you get to that um, selecting vertices are the top ring otherwise you could do border select but that's a lot quicker if you know what you're doing so now we need to use a thing called proportional editing so if you click view front and put change proportional to on and make sure it's the smooth fall off which it should already be at default but click S and you can see how it doesn't just make that um, sele those selected vertices smaller it actually makes a few vertices smaller within this cylinder here but how do you make that cylinder bigger? use the scroll wheel so now you can see the cylinder can go bigger and smaller and so you might want to do it again this time maybe make the amount of vertices there I don't know, it's up to you but that looks okay so you can see how it's bigger at the bottom than it is at the top you might want to click A twice and then scale it all up turn proportional editing off and then scale along the z-axis down to make it a little bit stumpier if you view front you can align it with the cursor about there and then click tab and you can see if that's what you want it to look like which I think you do, you might want to make it a little bit bigger for now but for now that's okay Um, and now we need to add the IPO curves again so go to frame 400 which you should already be on and then add a scale key with I and then click scale now you can go back to this IPO curve editor here and then right um, along the Z axis the um, sorry, the column should go up. Uh, the should go from zero up to this point. So we also need to add a IPO key at frame 100 when it's size zero. So S zero, then I scale. You can see how it gets bigger over time again but again you can see how it's not right so go into this and you can move around with alt again move up and down and then select the axis here and then click Z the Z button and click tab A to deselect them all and then right click on the handle click G and do exactly the same thing and make it so that it's a much, much steeper here and then with the Y and the sh shift X axis click tab A B and select this one here and bring it up a little bit oh yeah you need to select the whole thing so click B border select all these handles bring it up to about there, click A, B, G and change the curve to about that okay so it climbs quickly along the z-axis but the x and y-axis only changes in size a little bit because it starts off as a ring from the beginning which is fine now we need to do the same thing as the shockwave with the displacement modifiers but this time we're going to add another empty with a, um, ship, uh, sorry 
spacebar add mesh you know, add empty this is going to be 1.1 now we need to use the same as the column, the same hyper curve as this column. So click this arrow thing, op oblopo 001. Now we need to change the um make it a single user which I've just realized we didn't do before. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Change that to a single user and then we need to make it grow slower again. The Z axis grows slower. So click on the Z, click Alt to move along, click Tab, A, B, select all of these and click G, go back down to there. Click Alt, A, right click on this handle, G, down here. This is probably going to be a very long tutorial, so sorry about that. That's why I keep forgetting about it, because I've actually got the tutorial notes here. So, um, add another empty. Call this one 2.1. Add another IPO curve. This time the location should go up as well. So, click I go to from 100, you don't want to just click I anywhere randomly, it's from 100 and click I, location, scale. So that's a keyframe for the location and the scale. And then go to frame 400 and we actually need it to go a little bit higher than, or twice as high as the cylinder's top. Then add another location scale go back to frame 100 and click S0 to change the size to 0. So once we've done that we can see how the scale goes, the location along the z-axis goes up and the scale should go down but you need to add a key there as well. Now we also need to change it a little bit as well so that the scale of the empty goes nice and smoothly again. So zoom in a little bit, right click on the Z axis and click tab A B make sure all of them are selected and bring it up a little bit click A, B pull this up a little bit and then for the X and Y axis click tab A, B and bring this one up a little bit as well so now that is animated as well we also need to change the location as well. Okay, and then right click on this handle here and bring it up to about there so it grows quicker again. And then we actually need to make sure it's always halfway above, or most of the time halfway above, because we can't make it perfect, but we can try our best. So that'll do. Add another empty. Now this one's going to be called 3.1 and make this the same as the last empty and then make it a single user. Press on the 2, single user and then it actually needs to climb two times slower than that empty. So if you click this on this here we can see that's 1, 2, and kind of point to so if we just drag that down to about there that'll, that'll do drag that here like that okay oops just check that that's
Okay, now we need to add another empty called 3.1. So click add empty and call this one 3.1. Now this needs to be the same open curve as 2.1. So assign that there. And it also needs to climb two, um, it needs to, sorry, you need to make it a single user. And it also must climb 2.2 .2 times slower than the other one. So right click on the location of this one and then bring it down about 2.2 times, so about there for me to about there so now you can see it's kind of um, about there three quarters of the way up on the cylinder or cone or well, it's not really a cone, it's a column now I need to add some more displacements. So click Add Modifier Displace. Now this is Display 1. The mid level is 0 0.706 and the strength is 0 0.8317. Now we need to change this to Object and this needs to be 1.1 so at the moment you can obviously see that that's not really very great so we'll change that in a minute so hide that, alt to go up and down, alt left click to go up and down remember add modifier subsurf hide that add modifier, oh, apart from you need to send around to the levels down to 1 I need to add another modifier, displace this one is Display 2 as well. Well, it is Display 2. Move up. 0.5 and minus 0.3. Now, this needs to be an object, and the object is 2.1. Add another displace. Display 3. And the strength is minus 0.2. The object is 3.1. So you can obviously see that that's not really great at the moment. So one of the easiest ways to change the scale is to, instead of being in the hypercurve editor, click on this here, this um, hypercurve editor icon, and change it to outliner. Now it shows all the different objects that we've got here. So first of all click on 1.1 and scale it up a little bit or scale it down. Scaling it up is what we want to do though. So if we click, if we move up here and select the column here and just turn these off by pressing this button here and all these off and then press this one again and go back to 1.1 and scale it down a little bit to about well wherever it looks about right because we don't want it because you can see how it kind of comes in the middle here and that's because of our proportional editing that we did earlier so that's a bit annoying but just kind of make it quite about there now go to 2.2 and we also need to turn the displacement modifier on for subsurf and the next displace go to 2.2 and scale it up and down until or up, that's a bit too far up probably about there is what we want right click on this and click set smooth as well you might also want to add another subsurf modifier, but that's up to you again. I want to scale this down a little bit as well, because otherwise it's going to be a bit too bumpy, which isn't what we want. And apply the final displace modifier. Click 3.1 and scale it up and down. And this is just like the final detail, so it doesn't really make a difference. 
wherever you put it. Now you can kind of see that that already looks kind of like an atomic bomb. But we also need to do the fireball. And that's the final part of the uh, model. So view, go to view front, click add mesh UV sphere, 32 segments and 32 rings and click OK. Bring it up and click S to about that size. And although obviously that's not the type of file ball we were talking about, we are going to use proportional editing again but this time to make it kind of flatter. But first we need to click Alt A, to, no Alt, and left click to move it up to about this part here. Click Tab, and then right click on this ring, and then Alt, right click, until you get to this ring here. Then click Shift, and right click in the center of this dot. So click View Front, and change the proportional editing to on and click G and kind of flatten it down like that you need to make it quite big otherwise it's just going to look a bit rubbish but you can bring it in there then click G and then bring it down to about there and then bring it in again about there Make sure you press Z and it will actually lock it to the axis so you can only go up, which you should really have done. But move it to about there and you might want to do the bottom but for now that's going to be okay for me. So click tab and then click center cursor and then click center, move it up and actually I've actually done this not very well, so I'm just, I'm just gonna. You don't need to do this. I've basically just turned it over, so don't worry about that. You, instead of doing it from the top, you do it from the bottom, and it'll look a lot better. So that's what we want. Okay. Um, so we've got the fireball, but we want it to obviously animate and have that nice texture because if we have a look at that all we've got is nice cloudy stuff fireball uh, no cloudy shockwave and the fireball is just sitting there on its own so go back to frame 400 and click I okay so now we've got the shockwave in the column uh, we've got the fireball just sitting there on its own with no animation or texture or lumpy texture cloudiness so go to frame 400 and click I location and scale then go to frame 100 and a thousand and then go down to the ground if you click view front, it's a bit easier. Oops. And make sure that that little pink dot is on the floor. And then click S0, enter I location scale. So you can see it coming up. Obviously, um, because of Blender, it automatically makes it go in a weird curve. So if you go to IPO curve editor again, and then click on X, Y, and Z using Shift. Then click Tab, A, B. Select this handle here. Bring it up. So about there. And then go on the Z axis again and click Tab, A, B. Select this handle. Bring it up a little bit maybe a little bit more now this time it does have to be quite accurate otherwise you're going to get the column moving around everywhere and it won't look very good 
So every hundred frame or something. See what it looks like. Maybe a little bit higher there. It's frame a hundred. Or two hundred then. This is a little bit too high now, so G to about there. And I think that'll be okay for what we want to do. Now add another empty and this is going to be called 4.2. So click add empty alt left click to bring it back up again 4.2. Now this needs to go down a little bit but it also grow a little bit. So click go to frame 100 and this needs to be you need to click I location scale bring it down to about there and then press S to scale up to about that click no sorry you need to go to 400 first otherwise it's not going to actually do anything go down to there S scale it up a little bit I location scale now you need to click tab on all of these tab A, B, select this these handles here bring it up a little bit click A, B, select this handle and then bring it to about there and then the location needs to go a bit sharper as well so click tab A, B select this handle bring it down to about there now we need to add another empty and this one is going to be called 2.2 .2. And it's going to use the same IPO curve as 4.2, which is that one. And then we need to make it a single user and change the size a little bit. So click tab on the... No, it's wrong. Click on X, Shift Y, Shift Z, tab A, B, A, B, select this. G down a little bit, A, B, G, because you don't want it to go up and then go down again, you want it to go up and not go any higher anywhere, so that'll be okay, and then add another, add another empty, call this one 3.2, this is going to be the same as 2.2, and four, so 4.2, 2.2, 3.2 uh, go in the same location and they all go down at roughly the same speed or no they go down at the same speed and they all go roughly they all go roughly up in the same size now we need to add another displacement modifier to the fireball so go to add modified displace the texture is this plug 1 the mid level is 0.7 and the strength is minus 0.9 it kind of looks like a melted marshmallow or something now go to object 4.2 so yeah now it doesn't look like a melted marshmallow it kind of looks like a um, well it looks like an explosion or something it's not what we want so we will have to change that don't worry hide that one then click add modifier subsurf um, that's all fine apart from render levels to 1 add modifier displace change the mid level to 0 and the strength to minus 0.1 and then the object to 2.2 now that you need to change the texture to display 2 otherwise it's kind of pointless and then we need to add another subsurf this time 
and change the render levels to 1 again. Add another displaced modifier. This plus 3. Mid level is 0. And the strength is minus 0.1. That is getting a bit mad now. Change the oops, texture coordinates to object. And the object is 3.2. Now open up the outliner again and select these ones and we need to do the same thing as we did for the column and turn all these off so that we can see what what's not quite right so yeah that's a bit too mad so which one was that? that was 4.2 maybe make that so now if we open another window here, about there, because we only need that much, and go to Hypercurve Editor, and click on all these, and click Tab A, B, select all of these. We can actually move all of these up and down, so it kind of looks a bit more how we would like it. we don't want it to be too crazy otherwise it's just not going to look all that good we don't want it too little otherwise it's not even going to have much effect which again would be a bit pointless so I mean that's a too much still what we can also do is in the this object tab, we can change the strength a little bit so we might not want it that much so increase it a little bit to about there up to you however you think you would like the effect to be so hide that one add the subsurf, hide that one add the displace on this one now this displace is for object 2.2 AB select this one and this one bring it up a little bit maybe not, I don't know, you don't need to bring this one up I don't think that looks fine like it is now this might be too jaggedy for some people so you might want to change the jaggediness by just moving it up and down changing the settings here and stuff like that and the displays on this one object 3.2 can maybe we'll just change the strength for this because it's going to take quite a while to explain everything or some people might even just prefer it with this displacement not even on but I think that's just not enough there's not enough um, effect in it if without it so you can set it smooth view the front and you can actually rotate this along the so click R Z and rotate it to a point where you want it if you want but you can you will also need to rotate the empties as well but I'm not gonna bother with all that. So we can do that with the camera. So I think that looks okay. Now we need to add the materials. So go into the material tab, bring it up again, and to zoom out, click. Oh, how do we? Zoom out? I've forgotten how to zoom out. How do we zoom out of this? Um, hold control and use the scroll wheel. That's because I was zoomed out as far as I could go, I think. Um, so add a texture on the shading tab. Add new. And this texture needs to be kind of a dark, kind of, um, gr kind of green. But I'm just going to show you how to do it with these... Um, selection this selection here so click point 
Red is 0.461. Green is 0.461 as well. And blue is 0.412. So it's kind of a grey, greeny sort of colour. Grey, greeny, yellow. More of a yellow. Um, so this is where it gets a bit complicated because there's a lot of buttons we need to press and a lot of buttons that we need to turn off, a lot of things we need to rename. So click on material and call this one fireball. Like that. Now we need to go into the shaders tab <coughs> and change the ref ref to 0.686 and the rough to oh, yeah you need to change this to orange so change the rough to 1.04 turn cubic on and put the speculation to zero. So that kind of changes it so that you can't see the shininess of it. Now the kind of texture and the fire. So click add new texture, go into the texture tab and click texture. Change this to fire. Now I need to change the texture type to a blend texture. Oops, blend texture. Now change it to sphere, so you kind of see a spherical colour and stuff. Let's bring this up a little bit because it's too. I think I must have pulled it down. It just looks really weird. So yeah, go to colours, and we need to. Click color blend, color blend. Change the alpha to one. The brightness to 0.997. The contrast to 0.992. The red. Oh no. This. Um. Yeah. We need to change this one here to move it to about there and change it to a sort of yellowy bright yellow bit kind of well maybe pale yellow about there now add another one and move it to about there and this one is a bright orange about there Oh, for some reason this went one off. So you can see how that's nice fiery sort of texture. We also need to change this linear to B spline. So it looks like that. We also need to add a lamp. So click add lamp lamp. Move it to about the centre of the fireball. And we need to change the settings of the lamp under the lamp buttons. So make sure it's on lamp, sphere, change the colour to red 1, green is 0.856, and the blue is 0.342. So kind of orangey yellow. We also need to change the distance to 10. Then, so you can kind of see where that's how how much of the you're going to actually see is a nice glowy orangey yellow. We also need to call this the fireball L. Fireball L. And then we also need to go and change the lamp's object name to fireball L. So there we are. And then we can right click on the fireball again and go into the material tab and change the object to fireball L. Click map to and make sure it's on emit, map input and make sure it's on sphere. We also need to make little halos which are kind of 
kind of a bit like lamps, but, but it's the, well, it's not really, it's kind of the, um, re it's a glowing object, kind of, it's not really, but you'll probably, ex you'll probably understand once I show you more about it. So, click on the, uh, no, make, put the 3D cursor inside the shockwave cloud which it already is in and now we need to add a spotlight so click add mesh no add lamp spot now we can add a constraint that will make it always a point towards the camera so click um, on the object tab and click add constraint to track to and track it to the object camera And that's all we need to do, and you'll see that it is always pointing towards the camera, which it's not. What's the name of that camera? Yeah, it should be. For some reason it's not. Oh yeah, we need to change it so that it's not along the x-axis. And align to the minus z-axis. There we are. That's a bit better. Uh, the settings for this lamp is our, um, if we go into the lamp settings, change the colour to red, 1, green, 0 0.904, and blue, 0 0.517. You can kind of see a nice dark yellow. So click no diffuse and no specular. Click lin quad weighted. Change the linear to 0 0.208 and the quad to 0 0.327. Change it to halo and turn off buff shadow. Buffer shadow. And the spot size is 96.32 and the spot softness is. 0.3866 um, now what else do we need to do I think that's it the distance is 10.75 but we can change that depending on how big we want the radius of the initial um, what do we call it the uh, the glow before the explosion but we can set that we can, well we can set that now so if you click view top and right click on the camera and click G pull it out to about there and then click alt R and that clears the rotation so it just points downwards and then click RY90 and then RX90 if you go into 3D view on this one and click view camera you can see what it looks like so click G you can move it to the middle there and click view top and move it even further away and G to move it back to about there so that's the size of the the initial explosion so I didn't make it very big in my original video so it look, didn't look all that great so if you want to put the distance up just kind of make it put it to about there and that's what where the initial explosion will be so maybe move the camera more center of that initial explosion or the energy release so that's about right. Now we can actually animate the size of this. So if you click here, back here and click IPO Curve Editor and click on the, the Halo Spot thing and I'm actually not sure how you animate a spot, a spot size or how you add a spot size. So if you click on this object 
tab here and click lamp. Now you can see spot size, but I can't find any way of actually applying it. So the only way I found was clicking on spot size and then click curve, record mouse movement, still. And then clicking and you can see a curve come up, a uh, line come up. And then if you right click on that line and then move down a little bit, click G and move that to about mm, uh, just before 100 between 80 and 100 but well 90 <laughs> and then click tab right click on this and click marker duplicate marker no, point duplicate point and you can see a new one pop up and move that to 100 but much higher so I'm not sure what size we want that we do want it quite high so I'd actually say about 100 no I think we need it at about and let me just well while we can have a look so we see what this looks like we see that's not big at all so we can have a look is that big enough if we look at the camera okay so put this at about 140 and click point duplicate I go down to 180 which is about there on zero and then click A A tab click curve in top interpolation mode Bezier tab and then you have all the handles back and see how this all works Oops. okay so oh I think it's frozen yeah, um, bring up these and kind of just make it so it's curved in then curves down again so you can spend time on that if you want um, I'm not going to bother but that is it so you have now created an atomic bomb in Blender apart from there's actually a few things we have forgotten to do Click, click on the shockwave and change it to fireball and then right click on the cylinder and well the column click fireball um, there's a few things we can do like adding a texture to this plane if you want to you can I'm not going to do that but if you want to do that you can also duplicate this plane and create a background or you can just create a background with the world's tabs it, um, but that's basically it so hope you enjoyed this tutorial it took me quite a long time so hopefully you enjoyed it um, so yeah thanks for watching and goodbye